All right, in this video, I want to talk about Charles's law. Now, Charles's law states that uh, volume and temperature are directly related to each other when pressure is constant. Okay, so if I have a V1 and a T2, um, a starting volume and a starting temperature, if my volume increases, so will my temperature also. In the last video, we talked about how pressure and volume were inversely re related. That's uh, Boyle's law, whereas if pressure increases, volume decreases. In this video, we're going to do some problems where volume pressure is the same and volume and temperature change. Um, so that's kind of uh, the background of where this video is going to come. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you know that this is Charles's law or Boyle's law or whatever. Um, just as long as you know, you can have P1, V1, and uh, P2, oops, that should be a 2, P2, V2, uh, over T1, boy, I'm all kinds of typos there, T over T1, T2, and cancel out what's constant and solve uh, for the unknown that way. You can also uh, just do it that way. That's, that's kind of the big picture idea of things, but this is where the specifics come in. And Charles's law is volume and temperature directly related. So let's go ahead and solve for this problem here. I have one already up. A sample of neon gas has a volume of 5.4 liters. Now that's going to be my starting volume. So 5.4 liters. And a temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. Find the new volume of the gas after the temperature has been increased to 42 degrees Celsius at a constant uh, pressure. So it's telling us that our pressure is constant, so we know it's just going to be volume and temperature. All right, so our uh, second temperature, or our first temperature, is 15 degrees Celsius. Now, with any gas law, uh, degrees Celsius really don't matter, um, and there's kind of a reason behind that. Uh, you want to put everything into Kelvin instead of Celsius, and I strongly encourage you to watch uh, Sal's video at ConAcademy.org to really kind of get some understanding as to why. Um, it has to do uh, mostly with a 10 degree temperature change, and Kelvin is a lot more than a, uh, or not a lot more, but is significantly different uh, in the states of matter scheme of things than a 10 degree uh, jump in Celsius. But anyway, I won't go there. I'll uh, let you explore that on his website. He has some really good intuition on that. So we need to change this 15 degrees Celsius into uh, Kelvin. So basically, Celsius is, or Kelvin is Celsius plus 273. It's technically 0.15, but you can just say 273 uh, equals Kelvin. Okay? So we've got 15 degrees Celsius, add 273, and that gives us 288. So we have 288 degrees Kelvin there, and our second temperature is 42 degrees Celsius, okay? So we 42 plus 273 equals 315. 315 degrees Kelvin. All right, so uh, our P1, or I'm, or I'm sorry, our V1 over uh, T1 equals our V2 over T2, right? And uh, now all we have to do is solve for unknown. Well, there's an easy, uh, easier way to go about doing this than traditional algebra, maybe it is traditional algebra, you can look at it that way, but I like to do the cross multiply method with our formula here. So basically what that means is that P1 over T1 equal to V2 over T2, and I'm going to cross multiply these. I'm going to multiply T1 times V2 and T2 times P1, it's going to equal P1 times T2 is the same as T1 times V2. So now we have our adjusted formula. All we do is solve for our unknown, which is V2. So I divide both sides by T1. 
these cancel out and I'm left with P1 T2 over T1 equals V2. So now all we have to do is plug in our, our units and solve. So our pressure 1, or I'm sorry, this, this should be a, a, a V1. Not a, I just completely messed that up. Hold on, let me, let me do this over here again. I don't know what I was thinking. I was on your next set of problems, not this one. In the back of my mind. So let's do that over again, okay? Uh, we're solving for volume and temperature. So we have V1, T1 is the same as V2, T2. Cross multiply these and we have V1 times T2 is the same as V2 times T1. Sorry for the brain fart there. So now all we do is plug in our unknown which is V2 or divide both sides by uh, T1 <clears throat> and that gives us our adjusted formula which is V1 T2 over T1 equals V2. So let's just plug in our numbers and go. Uh, we have volume 1 which was 5.4 liters 4 liters times our temperature 2 which is 42 degrees Celsius uh, which turned into 315 degrees Kelvin. So, go ahead and 315 degrees Kelvin divided by our first temperature, which is 15 degrees Celsius, uh, which turned into uh, 288 degrees Kelvin. degrees Kelvin and now that's going to equal our V2. So grab the calculator. Let me move this out of the way for you there. Alright, so 5.4 times 315 divided by 288. That's going to equal 5.90. So V2 equals 5 Point nine zero. Well, 5.90 what? The Kelvin's going to cross out. We're left with liters. 5.90 liters, which is what they wanted to know. Find the new volume of the gas after temperature has been increased um, to 42 degrees Celsius. So I hope that doesn't confuse you. Didn't confuse you too bad. Uh, once again, if this is new to you and it's kind of uh, intuitively not making a lot of sense, uh, check out Khan Academy's video, and uh, I hope it helped. Thanks for watching.